Welcome back to Effing Priceless. It is now episode eight, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we are really excited for this episode for mainly because we were not expecting to do this episode this soon. No, so we did the paranormal slash aliens, but we didn't even get into like half of it because of the time. Yeah. And uh, so that was part one, and we did that a couple episodes ago. For episode five. We were going to save this one for way down the line. Mm-hmm. And then something really weird happened just last night when we were recording something else. And we were sitting right here, same setup, and we're in our game room. So we're in the corner of the game room for those of you not watching. And uh, we're set up just at a glass table right in front of my bar. And on the other side of the room, off screen, is a, a kennel, a dog, a small dog kennel, which I used to use for one of my dogs. We don't use it anymore. And you know what? To be honest, it, we should have sold it, put it in the garage something because it never gets used and it's just sitting there. Well, it has uh, a dog bed in it and a, two water bowls, or a, a food bowl and a water bowl. Mm -hmm. And they've been sitting there for at least a month, at least. untouched. And the kennel is, it's a wire kennel, so it's not enclosed with plastic. You can see right through it, open top. And um, it has a, a regular latch that works. Mm -hmm. And it's been closed and locked, just sitting there in the corner, doing nothing for well over a month. A month, yeah. So we were sitting here filming. We went through our episode. And we got up and we were, I was walking around the game room and there's a bowl of that dog food bowl sitting three feet away from the kennel in the middle of the floor. <laughs> and I immediately was like, Presley, did you do this? And what, you just and walked over? And of course, I, I <clears throat> didn't even know what he was talking about. I was like, what do you mean? And then I, of course, I like walked around. We have a pool table in the center of the room. So I walked around it and I was like, what? And he was like, the dog food bowl. I was like why is that outside of the kennel? And he was like, that's what I'm asking you. Exactly. Like, At that point, I got it? a little chill and we got real serious with each other. Are, you know, are we fucking with each other? And did we try to prank and scare? Yeah, mainly I was like, did you do yeah. this? Because that's not funny. No, 100% one, I did not move that, touch that. And it's really peculiar because when we recorded the episode last night, we had two dogs in the room. Mm -hmm. Two of the dogs were in my room. The cat was wandering around the house. And then we have my Italian Mastiff, Kalua, that you've seen. And Mimosa, my sister's dog, the Shih Tzu Maltese. And they were both in the room. So if there's a bowl of food, because we feed our dogs at specific times. Yeah. And definitely not in the game room. One outside and you feed her upstairs, right? Yeah, in my room. So we're very uh, consistent with our feeding schedule. And there is a bowl that we don't even use anymore <laughs> sitting in the middle of the game room, three, four feet away from that kennel. And there's food in it. And it's really weird because with the, both of our dogs, if there's food out, they're just going to go and eat it. Especially my Kalua. My Mastiff, she's 130, 35 pounds. She's huge. She will eat, especially little dog food. I she's was going to say, especially Mimosa. <laughs> yeah. She'll eat, like, Scotch the Pomeranian or Mimosa food. They'll eat it. And then Mimosa is a is little fatty. It's a little fatty. badass, yeah. She will eat anything and everything you put in front of her. She tries to eat my dog's food. Yeah. She tries to steal the cat's food. So if that food was just sitting there the whole time we were recording, first off, how did it get there? How did the bowl come out of the kennel? Yes, that. And then one of them would have eaten it, and right, right where we were sitting, this is 10, 12 feet away from us, we would have noticed and heard the noise. Exactly. So we're very... It was. It creeped us out because... It really creeped us out because, one, there hasn't been a dog there, and we were recording talking about our animals and past animals also. And to add to that... There's a door that's right next to the kennel. We were just in that room earlier that day. Yes. So there's so, no way, and for that door to swing open, it would have hit where the the bowl was sitting. Mm -hmm. So there's no way it was like that. There's no way, and honestly, even us just like walking around the house or anything, we would have noticed it because it was something so random. It's sitting in the middle of the floor. It in wasn't the by the, floor. the wall in a corner. You mm -hmm. know, it wasn't. It was way out of place. Exactly. So it really freaked us out. We started racking our brains. You know asked the room to kind of move it we like put it back in the kennel and we were like all right if you're here if somebody or something is here go ahead and move it for us 
and we left we like did our own thing whatever we come back nothing happened but I don't know if something does happen full on ghost investigation is going on in this yeah. house we, we both sat in the room quietly and do you feel anything no I don't feel weird I don't have a weird feeling you yeah. know cold static nothing and we both said out loud if something's here do it again and we left it there I actually went and got the uh, my dog camera out of my room and mm-hmm. put it in front of there to watch it randomly and so as it moved but what also adds to the uh, creepiness is when we were filming last night we were talking about some of our previous pets yeah and some of the dogs that have passed away and they've some of them have passed away here in this house yeah, a lot of them have so it was kind of peculiar and kind of weird yeah. that we were just talking about you know some of the animals that we've lost in our lifetime and our previous pets and then something very peculiar happens additionally weird that mimosa and kalua didn't even go towards the dog bowl and start eating it while we we're filming and we would have seen it right here we would have heard it yeah not only that and so i don't know i we thought it was super creepy and we went through every single scenario of what could have happened like one our cat could not have done that <laughs> you can't pick it up three feet over the the cage wall and then set it down two three feet away without spilling any of it like a, a, I, I get an animal dogs, wouldn't be able to do that yeah i've seen dogs and cats pick up their bowl with their mouth yes but they're not super caught they're they spill mm-hmm. they spill it's gonna make noise it's not gonna be silent She's not going to jump over that wall, do that, grab it, put it back there without anybody noticing and spilling anything. Exactly. And then, obviously, Mimosa can't do that. <laughs> and Kalua, she's very tall, but again, like he said... If she wanted to get in that, she could, but it would be really noisy. It would be super loud. It is a metal... It's one of the metal wire cages. So and it's for a small dog. Yes. Kalua can't even fit in that. <laughs> so anytime you like move it, even a little bit, you yeah. hear it. So we were going over the footage last night, trying to see if we like heard anything. And um, we, both of us remembered, hello Uzo. <laughs> He's knocking the mic right now. And both of us remembered like hearing something and we looked over there, but it was nothing super loud or anything. No, like it, nothing you could even hear over the headphones. If you move, yeah, and, and with these sensitive mics. Mm-hmm. And if you move, anybody knows this. If you move and kind of set down a bowl that has a whole bunch of dog food in it, you can hear it. Yeah. It, it makes noise. Exactly. And... So weird thing about mimosa, mimosa does not chew her food. <laughs> that, it's really weird. She it's really inhales weird. inhales <laughs> it. She just swallows it. And so my brother was like, wouldn't you be able to hear her crunch, crunch, crunch? And I was like, no, remember, she doesn't. <laughs> she literally, I, she yeah. doesn't chew her food. She swallows it. My sister told me it. this the other day, and I watched her. when I gave her a treat, yeah. and I was expecting to hear the crunch. And I mean, it was no a small. Crunch. It was about the size of a you know a pebble of dog food, a little. Yeah, but even then, small dogs usually chew their yes, food. Yes, my dog does. Our previous smaller dogs have. She <laughs> swallows it. She just puts it in her mouth mm, and fucking swallows it like a psychopath. <laughs> oh my poor little. So, girl. in uh yeah, in lieu of that weird thing that happened that we still cannot figure out, we decided to go ahead and do the paranormal and a uh, and a uh, UFO alien episode today. Yeah. So. I mean, we didn't get a chance to get to the rest of these stories last time, so yes. we're kind of going to finish it off, talk about a lot about aliens, mainly this episode, Yes. Um, and then one more ghost story to like top it off on top of our weird dog bowl scenario. That, uh, <laughs> that was weird. We cannot explain it. We put everything back today. I even put, and I keep them, the, uh, the old tags of previous dogs that mm-hmm. I've had, and I put two of them in there in a specific way so that if they get moved, we'll know. Yeah. So we'll, we'll let y'all guys know if anything happens. For sure. We'll keep you guys updated. But very strange. It was weird. So from the previous episode, episode five, if you listened, <clears throat> we talked a lot about my brother's previous Ouija boards. and Specifically the one. Specifically the super sketchy, sus, haunted one that you it's, got yes. from a witch. <laughs> she, I don't know if it was a witch, but they did practice either. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Black magic, Black magic, voodoo, yeah. Santeria, something. They were into an, an occult thing. Exactly. So, something else happened with this Ouija board. So, yeah. La- that other episode, we only talked about um, the time that it moved by itself. And that, that was... Mm-hmm. That was a really was intense yeah. story. I've never seen anything like that. I've never experienced anything to that level. Right. But, um, you know, time went on. And I didn't use that Ouija board too many times more after that, just because I think the the few friends that I had that did it with me, um, 
one of them we were no longer friends with, and the other one, um, Mike, that got the EVP in the old house, mm -hmm. uh, was afraid, super afraid <laughs> of it. So they would never do it with me. Super afraid of it. <clears throat> so also, I didn't have the same girlfriend that I did with back then. So it just sat there for a while. Yeah. And then time went on, and for some reason, I used it again. I think when I had some friends uh, in town, and nothing happened. Well, later that week, something did happen. Um, I had a dream. I woke up uh, a little bit late for work. Like, I needed to get there. I was going to get there just on time, and I like to get there a little bit sooner. Mm -hmm. Well, I woke up from a dream pretty much, like, in tears, hyperventilating, heart racing. Like, you woke up from a very serious nightmare. Yeah. And the nightmare shook me so bad that I just, um, whatever, I was, I was in a hurry, and I was kind of like uh, confused mind fucked at the time yeah and threw on clothes run upstairs um get in my car go to work well the things that happened and then when i told the people at work my boss that i trust and it was a good friend of mine it, it it really made sense that something was going on right so let me explain so this dream it's in a uh, I i'm living in a a really big house it's really cool big and nice um the distinguishing, dis distinguishing sorry, <laughs> feature of that house was that I lived downstairs, and to leave, you had to go to the upper floor, and it was a big spiral staircase to get there. Okay. So I was like, okay. Well, I'm in my room. I get a phone call saying that you, that Presley, is in the hospital, that my sister is injured, something happened. Get to the fucking hospital right now. Yeah. So I freak out, grab my keys, throw on clothes, run 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 get to the spiral staircase and it's like i'm in a nightmare so mm -hmm. i'm running up the spiral staircase and it's whatever floors taking to get forever, to the yeah. yeah it's taking a long time and i'm running as fast as i can fast as i can heart racing it's a, a very intense at that point to mm -hmm. get to my car to get to you so i finally get up i run outside to the driveway i jump in my car and when i slam the door closed as i'm putting the keys in the ignition i have a necklace and this necklace is from um, a retreat, a, a religious retreat when I was younger in high school. And it's sitting around, uh, or it's hanging around my rearview mirror. Like a lot of people put uh, rosaries and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, I just always had it there for good luck. Well, as I slam the door and put the keys in the ignition, that thing unties and falls to the ground. And I'm like, oh, that was weird. Uh, car starts, I haul ass, I get to the hospital, you know. And the, and the dream really ends right there. And I never really got to figure out what happened with you. Mm -hmm. But it was such the intensity that I was trying to hurry. And they said, like, something bad. It wasn't just like, oh, you're going to car wreck. She's okay. No, like, get here now. Yeah. So I woke up, like, really um, full of emotions and, like, holy shit. That was, um, wow. Like, that fucked me up. That was intense. Yeah, yeah. Like, that was really weird. I was really scared. So I was like, oh, shit. Now I'm late for work. I go to my closet, throw on my clothes, go upstairs, and I'm like hurrying. I'm kind of like running to my car at this point. And I get in my car, slam the door closed, and as I slam the door closed and reach to put the keys in the ignition, that very same necklace in my dream, the one that's been hanging from my rearview mirror since high school. So at that point, I think I was like 20, 22 maybe. Mm -hmm. You know, a few years, it's been hanging on that car's rearview mirror. Yeah. It and it's unties itself home. exactly how it did in the dream, and it falls. And my heart just stopped. I was like, <laughs> holy shit, did that just happen? Yeah. Exactly how it happened in my dream. And so that's, that's precogging something. Right. You saw something and then it happened. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people do that and it's like, oh, coincidental. But that is very specific. Right. That necklace has never fallen off by itself. It was tied. Um, the necklace rope, it was a rope, had double knots on it. So it, it was like so sliding. sliding. Yeah, you can make it bigger adjustable. or smaller. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So both knots untied and it slipped off and fell. And it's been hanging there for a few years. Yeah. Never fallen off. Literally, when I got it in high school, I put it on my car and it had never moved, moved since then. Very specific. Really, really weird. And it's a religious necklace. Yeah. So I was like, Super oh, weird. okay. So I kind of like, you know, I'm late to work. <laughs> and it shook me and then I get in my car and go to work. I go to work, uh, I get there, and uh, this time I was working at a teppanyaki restaurant. I was an assistant manager there, and I told our general manager what happened. Actually, no. He asked me, Bobby, what the fuck is wrong with you? Some, you're weird oh, today. Really? Yeah, Raul asked me. Okay. And so he pulled me into this office. I was like, what's going on with you? And I was like, dude, something fucking weird happened, and I can't get it out of my head. Yeah. He's like, what happened? I was like, 
I don't know if you're going to believe me. He's like, just tell me. And I told him. And then this is what he brings up because there's a part of the, the, uh, the dream that I haven't told you yet. The most important part. So as this dream's going on, I'm getting flash images away from the dream. So I'm in my room. I grab my keys, throw on my clothes, and I start running to the stairs. And as I'm running to the stairs, I get a, a flash picture of me inside my room. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, whatever. And I'm running, running, running. Go back to running. I'm running up these stairs. I get another flash image of me walking into my closet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Running, 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 running. I hit almost to the top of the stairs. Then I get a flash image of me in my closet where I keep that hidden haunted as fuck Ouija board. Yeah. Back to the jump in my car. And as I slam the door, you know, throw the keys in ignition as the necklace falls, I get another flash image that pulls me away from that. And it's me opening the Ouija board. Mm -hmm. And then the dream continues on. I haul ass. I try to go to the hospital. And then I wake up. Right. So I tell my manager all of this. And he's like, dude, you know what it is. And I was like, what do you mean? And he goes, first off, let, let's just like, um, let's put it out there and really recognize it. You precogged something. Yeah. You saw something and it really happened. You saw it before it happened. And that's know? something super specific too. It's not like. Like, I told you about a dream that I had had when one of my friend's moms died. Yes. And I dreamt about her. Mm -hmm. But she didn't die in my dream. It was just really weird that the next morning it just so happened that yes. she had passed away. But for something so specific like that to happen is actually really, really strange. It's, it, that's what it's it was. It was so, like, strange. in the dream for that necklace to fall off and fall down in the car, it was so insignificant. Right. Because I was hauling ass, worried about you trying to go to the hospital. Yeah. So in the dream, I didn't even, it fell and I was like, whatever, brrr, take off. You didn't even think twice about yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, if I was getting in my car on a normal day, I'd be like, oh, what the fuck? How did that fall off? Yeah. And you'd like, probably put it back on. Yeah. Or I'd tie it back up. And yeah. Like, that was weird. But for it to really happen like that, he's like, okay, let's just recognize that. He goes, number two, obviously you should know what's going on. It's the fucking Ouija board, that haunted ass Ouija board that you told me about. Because he knew about it. Yeah. And I asked him if he wanted to play. He's like, I don't fuck around with that shit. You know, he was afraid Same. of me. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, honestly, my opinion is it's calling to you. Mm -hmm. It, it wants, wants to, talk. to talk to you. And I was like, oh, shit. And another thing is about the dream. It's something that is so significant to you like me specifically it got my attention yeah like i mean me it pulled me and my emotions were racing when i woke up yeah it wasn't just a a random scary dream like someone breaks into your house and kills you like okay right it was something that meant something to me exactly yeah. and so that to me is one probably not a very friendly spirit that is trying to talk to you <laughs> it, it got my attention it, it, but it knew what you know to, what i mean like it knew exactly head. what to do to call to and you. it's like giving me hints during the dream hello 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 like hello and you got closer and, and closer to the closet yeah as the dream was getting more intense yeah it so yeah he told me that and and i knew i was like oh shit like he's right yeah there's he's totally right so what was his advice uh, I don't. I'm sure his advice was not to do what you did. <laughs> yeah, I, you know what? I don't remember, but I just remember leaving that shift and thinking, okay, well, I gotta go talk to him. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I um, it was the next day, and I had been thinking about it all day and then throughout the night, and then I was supposed to go to work again, and this time I was not in a hurry. I had plenty of time. <laughs> so it, it just what we talked about myself and Raul, it, it, I couldn't get out of my head and I had just made the decision. I was like, okay, let me go, let me go use the Ouija board yeah. alone, which you're not supposed to do. Exactly. Which I had never done either. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. So I go in my closet and uh, I have some room in my closet. I get, like you can walk in it. So I go in my closet, I close the door and I actually sit down in my closet, you know, and I go pull the Ouija board out and I put it right in front of me and I'm sitting down um, Indian style, you know, crisscross style um, on the carpet. Right. So I put it out, I put my hands on the board, and I start moving in in circles, and I close my eyes, and I'm like, is anybody here? Nothing. Okay, is there anybody here that wants to talk to me? And the lights are on, right? Yeah, well, yeah, I'm in there. yeah but my eyes are closed. Right. So I keep doing it, and I do it for, I want to say, 10, 15 minutes, and nothing's, I don't feel weird. Again, you know, a tingle, static, hair standing up on my arm, like, nothing's happening. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, look. You reached out to me in my dream. 
you got my attention. I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm right here. Talk to me. Do something. And if you're not, it, this went on for a few minutes, five, ten more minutes. And I was like, all right, if you're not going to do anything, well, I I'm just going to fucking leave because this is ridiculous. And while I'm saying that, I heard um, what I could only describe as like a little click in the room, like a little tick. Yeah. And, you know, my eyes are closed and I'm still moving the Ouija, the plant shit on the Ouija board in circles to try to get something to take over. And it didn't even, it, you know, there's multi, there's mom and dad are in this house, in this house at the time. Uh, you weren't here, but my ex-girlfriend lived here at the time. You know, there are other people in the house. To, so just to hear something, it's like, oh, it's whatever. Especially it something one of my, so little. Like, yeah, it was a little. Yeah. It, it could have been one of my dogs running AC, around in the next room. literally anything. Exactly. So I did not even pay any attention to it. I kept going. It's not working. It's not moving. So I was like, all right, getting more frustrated. All right, this is your last chance. Okay, well, I guess you're not powerful enough because you can come to me in dream, but you can't even do this. Right. Then you're not worth talking to. At that point, I was do I was using a little bit of a provocation, mm -hmm. kind of goading the spirit into doing something, which, again, you should not do. <laughs> but, you know, nothing happened. And I was like, all right, well, uh, I guess you're weak as fuck. I'm, I'm done with you. And I was like, goodbye. And I moved to goodbye, and I pick up the planchette, and I open my eyes, and I'm in the dark. <laughs> it's... <laughs> dark in here. This bitch turned off the lights on you. So yeah, I jump up really scared and I turn on the lights and I instantly know what that click was. The click was the spirit turning off the lights, the right. light switch in there. So we don't have a typical light switch. We have the, where you like press it. Yes. Like you press yes. it on. It's not and the typical flip up and down. Exactly. Yes. So and it can't just, well, houses that have the typical switches if it sometimes if you hit it and not pay attention you'll get stuck like halfway and exactly. then it can click over on itself mm -hmm. our light switches are not like that no. so that's important to mention and he sat there and tried to make it yes like, you're stay right in the i did see if if that could be done right because that's what i thought i was like oh i didn't you know like a regular light switch and i tried over and over. i was like there is no in between stuck no. on those kind of switches mm -mm. there it, it's not like that so then i knew and I got, you know, a little chills, but I didn't feel anything in the room. So I was very confused because I was like, I'm right here surrendering and opening ready to receive whatever you fucking put in my mind last right. night and got my attention. But then why such the small, like a click, like, hey, we're here. Yeah, it's we're not even around talk watching to you. you, but you're not going to take that advantage. Right. Do you think maybe, um, I don't know why I just thought of this. Like I, I've never mentioned this to him before. Um, maybe they like wanted you to do it with other people. Like they wanted an audience almost. Um, like, do you think ghosts know that you're not supposed to do it by yourself? Well, here's my opinion on that. Um, the more people there is, is in my, in my opinion, I don't think that happens quite often. I think they take advantage of you while you're alone. That's what I think too. Or because that's what I that's do. Because that's when they can really get your attention. Right. Because if it's a multiple people and everyone sees it, they're like, oh shit. And then it's like, oh, I'm exposed. Like everyone knows I'm here. But if I only do it to one person and then they tell other people, they're like, no, it's not. I've never seen that. I've never experienced that. I feel like it's a way to draw you in alone. I guess. But then there's the things that we see on like ghost adventures where it may do, like there are certain ghosts that only do things when let's say Aaron is around. But because that's what I'm saying. They, they're they they're reaching out to a specific person. But then there's times where they do things in front of all of them. And they're like, all right, you have our attention. Like, yes. what's up? You're right. Um, the only thing I can say about that is that I think, I mean, those guys are going to extremely active and right. really, really haunted places. You yeah. know, that have more just, not just like, oh, someone's grandma, but maybe like a murder or like multiple murders or mm -hmm. some shit that happened. They go to pretty... Yeah, they go to like serial killers. Yeah. They go to like pretty fucked up places. So, Suicides happen, like You know what? I don't know. Things. Well, let's do it tonight and see. No, fuck. <laughs> no, like I mentioned in episode five, I'm very against in doing a Ouija board, I hope you guys can see Bob Big. <laughs> yeah, if you're watching at home, our cat just got on the table and is trying to mess with the Ouija board planchets herself. Okay, Bob Big. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm very against it only because, one, I'm very open to spirits and mm -hmm. I strongly believe in them. And I just think that I would be taken advantage of. <laughs> Yeah, quite possibly. And so I'm just not, I'm not into like calling something to me. Like not, not really about that. Even though I would like follow the rules to the T at the end of the day, you never know what could happen. 
And so I just would rather stay away from Well, then what about doing EVPs? You're directly trying to talk to them. Well, I'm fine with EVPs. I feel like an EVP, it strictly is just talking to them. Mm -hmm. But with a Ouija board, I don't know. I feel like it. you have more of a more of a chance, I guess, of like feeling things and like, See, I, I, I don't know. I, I think the opposite. Really? I think the EVPs capture more because it takes the least amount of effort. And for me, that means energy for them. Right. Because EVPs, it's like saying every time we're talking right now, um, ghosts can be talking back, but we can't hear that. Right. Hold on, let me adjust this mic. My dog's moving it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I guess okay. I just feel like with EVPs, something has to happen for me to do an EVP. Like I would never do an EVP out of the blue, for example. Why? But with a Ouija board, <laughs> because why like waste the time? Like if something happens, okay, I'm down to do an EVP. Whereas with a Ouija board, people just do that for fun. And like, to me, that's weird. And like, why would people do that for fun? Because it is something that I take very seriously. Yeah. Like it, it really does scare me. It mm. creeps me out. I believe 100% in spirits, ghosts, demons, and so the people, for what, me, well, hold I don't on know. Now. The people that do it for fun are the people that don't believe in it. The people that believe in it, they're not messing around with it. They respect, and they know, oh, no, I don't want to fuck with that. I believe in that. Yeah, but you've done it for fun. I wouldn't say fun. I'm just doing it to... To call somebody but that's out not of the blue. What do you think EVP is? EVP is calling out to anybody to, to give me proof that you're here. I, okay, so whenever you've done EVPs, it's because you've heard something has happened there or because you've seen something happen there with your own eyes. And then you do EVPs. Okay. You wouldn't just walk into a random house that you don't know is haunted or not and do an EVP, in my opinion. No, but that's because the, the board itself is supposed to bring the haunt. Yeah, so it's not, that. but it's still not based on location where EVP is. But like, why would you bring something over to your house? Like, uh, uh-uh, fuck that. I'm just not about it. I mean, if I go to a party, I'm gonna bring some weed. Like, you gotta bring something. <laughs> after okay, so I feel like bringing a demon and weed is a little bit, okay, a little so bit different. What if we did an EVP at this house and you're like, "Hello, yes, um, you know, do you like me?" And it said, "Wait till you're alone." How would you feel? I would not like that at all. <laughs> I didn't like that you just say that. <laughs> I got chills, guys. Well, I would like that. that. Was that that's what happened with that Ouija board. I and it, like it, it flipped all. off the lights on me. I knew then that there was something there. Yeah. But it didn't do enough to get my attention. And nothing, I got rid of that Ouija board. And nothing ever happened afterwards. Interesting. But see, like, I mean, and I still have the planchette from it. Yeah, but see, for it to do that, I would think that after that scenario, you probably would have done an EVP or like some other sort of investigation. But um, it would have taken. It takes something I, for you I've to never proceed done an to EVP an EVP. Here. I did EVPs at the restaurant that I used to work at that was haunted, yeah. and the old house that I lived in. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It would be something had to provoke you to do an EVP. Whereas a Ouija board, people just do it to see if something is there. Mm, okay, yeah, I kind of agree with that. And I feel it, like people do take it to places that are supposedly something there, though. That's true. No, I, I you know, agree with that, too. But for me... If, because one time I wanted to take you to the cemetery with the Ouija board, and you did not want to do that. I said no to the Ouija board. But I said go I'd cemetery. go to the cemetery. Yeah. We tried to do EVPs, but there was, was too, too much windy. background noise yeah. and cars going by. Like, you can't do it there. Um, but that's what I'm saying. If nothing is happening, why would I call something to, for shit to start happening? Like, no thanks. When you say I do it for, I have done it for fun, I'm doing it to, to experience and see something. More proof for me. Yeah. To see something so that the rest of my life I would be like, not have I only experienced some weird shit, but I've seen one. Yeah. I've actually, you know, or... No, I get or that. Or the freaking bowl like it moved it moved it, it, by it, itself it guys. lifted up and moved and i if i could see that that would blow my mind yeah and then i'd be incredibly obsessed with it i mean i'd be in here every day trying to get us to talk to it or yeah like our mom would sell our house and move <laughs> no i'll stay here 
Well, yeah, that was that other Ouija board story. That that one was definitely, it messed with my mind. Yeah, that was one that we didn't get to last time. So, um, but definitely worth mentioning, I think. Every yes. time you tell me about the dream, it literally gives me chills. Because it's so weird. And for you to actually, like, precog something. That's, and, I'm, I don't think I've ever precogged anything uh, even close to that again. Yeah. I, I've done this, like, what we talked about in the other episode, uh, connections and people and energy and frequencies about, like, oh, you get that, you know your, whatever, cousin's about to call. Yeah. And before the phone lights up, or you, you think that, and then the phone lights up. Right. That is precogging something. And it's, you know, how people send energy to each other. Like, I have the intention and feelings to call and connect out to you. And so my energy gets there before the phone phone call gets there. Right. You know? But nothing like that. Nothing right. as specific and perfect like that. Yeah, that was so crazy. But yeah, Bombay's just chilling on the table, guys. <laughs> well, now we can talk about our other oh my God. little... Uh, not so well. I mean, a lot of people believe in aliens. It's aliens. Aliens are out there. Alien, okay? <laughs> aliens is the next topic. Okay. <clears throat> um, a lot of people believe in aliens. I you should believe in aliens. They're I there. believe that there are other beings. I don't know how. I don't know what their purpose is, but I do believe that there is something else in the universe. Okay. Or in other universes. And do you think they've been here? Yes. Okay. Why? I don't even know. I just, I believe that, honestly, it's, <laughs> this is going to sound like such a cliche, but because of how sketchy the government is with a lot of certain, About it? About it. That's a good reason, though. I, I do truly believe that there is. And Joe Rogan had, what's that guy's name who wrote the, the old Navy guy? Oh, you mean the, uh, he was a Navy pilot. He's commander, I forget his name, commander something. The, the recent video that just came out in 2019 where some fighter pilots were doing some training exercises over the yeah. ocean and they saw something and they tried to keep up with it and that, uh, it was a UFO. It's mm -hmm. still unidentified. Not only um, moved in a capacity that no aircraft on the planet can do right now. Right. These are going faster than F whatever they're now. 16, 18, or 20s. Oh. The, the fucking <laughs> fighter pilots. Yeah. They're moving at in ways that they can't even touch. Like, because that there is... So, specifically that guy, the video that he released, I believe. Uh, I don't know if he released it, but he was the pilot. He because was the Joe Rogan finally got him on it, and he was like, yeah, I'm the one who... I saw this with my eyes. And yeah. he explained all the... Um, on that, if you watch that video, it has a whole bunch of instrumental readings on the bottom from the plane. And he goes, see that right there? Yeah. One of the things that, that really tripped him up was that they couldn't get exact range on it mm -hmm. because the craft was actively jamming their radar. Exactly. Which, in uh, for us, that if any aircraft does that to any of our things in our airspace, that is an act of war. Mm -hmm. That is not a, oh, you're in our space, what do you do? That mm -hmm. is an act of war right. to actively jam because you only do that when you don't want them to know where you are and you're about to go attack them. Exactly. So they immediately called the alarms up, like, this thing is jamming us. Mm -hmm. We can't even get a good read on it. And they're trying to follow it with just his eyes. That's how it disappeared, like, miles away. And they could, they finally found it. And they're like, dude, how did it get over here this fast? We're going however fast fucking fighter flights. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But it's for those reasons that I do believe that there are other beings. I don't know what their purpose is. I don't know why they're here. But I do believe that there is something, mainly because of that guy. Yeah, that was, that's a great video. If you haven't seen a it, definitely look it up. great video. And he spoke to Joe Rogan, and they talked a lot about it. Mm -hmm. and he that tweeted in very details, and it's good. Exactly. And that conversation was very interesting to me. And then I also watched... What about the Bob Lazar one? I was going to say, and then I watched the Bob Lazar documentary. Bob Lazar is a, um, a scientist that worked at a adjunct military secret little compound right down the road from Area 51. Mm-hmm. And he, when he eventually was released, um, got a lot of threats because of what he published about what he saw. And he said he fucking saw some shit. Yeah, and they Very also, detailed. didn't they discredit him? Like, they yes. mm -hmm. basically erased all of his life's work yeah. of education, yep. of previous jobs, everything. Like, the government He had went to a, uh, a prestigious school, and you can no longer, there's no record of him going there anymore. Exactly. And he's like, I fucking went there. But, like, I have a diploma. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they completely discredited him. So 
because of the government's sketch sketchiness That's about it, yeah. I, I do believe that there is something else out there. So that that for sure is a valid point. Uh, my reasoning, uh, besides the fact that I've seen one, because that that's it now. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> um, I was always a believer because of of us people, the hieroglyphics. Okay. So here's my thing: in the Dawn of Man, we are done. Mm -hmm. We got a little bit more civilized. We came together, and we had to hit a point of civilization to really jump off and start building towns and cities and shit like that. Right. And empires. Well, all around the world, we are disconnected. In Meso uh, Mesopotamia, Native Mesopotamia. Am sure, that. <laughs> Native Americans, mm -hmm. um, all in uh, some of the big jungles in Africa, in South America, Incans, Mayans, Egyptians, all around the world, around the same fucking time, humans blossomed. We got language, complex language, social orders, math. That didn't just come from anywhere because you could theorize that, yeah, okay, this group of people is really smart and there's just a couple individuals that, boom, brought it to light and they created math. Yeah. They created how to build the fucking pyramids and all the structures around the earth that scientists today can't explain. Well, in every single one of those cultures, every single one, there's hieroglyphics. There's hieroglyphics of beings, of beings. coming from the yeah. sky and teaching them yeah and they they have a lot of uh some of them have these wands that they show that would glow and do stuff mm -hmm. or some of them show stones and that they taught those people math uh social orders like how to really build a civilization right the math and the language is the big one yeah no 100 and then how to build structures that we can't even explain a fucking goddamn yeah, pyramid. Yeah, well, especially, I was going to say, especially the pyramids, but not only the pyramids, a lot of the ruins. Like, well, Yeah, I use pyramids very loosely, yes. Exactly. Ancient ruins. Because Ancient ruins. The way they built it, they don't know. They don't know how they did it. On top of that, they didn't have the fucking, like, architecture minds to do this at this point. Exactly. They are super precise stones that are the size of, like, vans. And they're, and they're the same exact size. Same cut. Same to do it exactly perfectly. Yeah. Like, it's Easter Island. No one can explain that. No the one can, pyramids of Gizmo. Can explain no it. one can explain that. A lot of shit in South America that is still getting discovered, they can't explain that. Yeah. They all show in however they paint their hieroglyphics, their wordings, that something came from the sky and told them. So in my opinion, 100% that's aliens. Okay. And so what I think is aliens came to Earth. They, bloop, hey, there's a planet however many light years away, popped on over and was like, huh, these guys are... Kind of still monkeys, but they're getting there. Let's go teach them a whole bunch of shit. But why would they want them? Why would they want us to be smarter? Because I'll get to it. Okay. For a very specific reason. So, boom. Let's uh, give them a little bit of knowledge. Let's start them off, and we'll come back in a couple thousand years. Mm -hmm. See how they're doing. Check it on. Because if you think about humans, humans are a relatively young species. At least Homo sapiens are. Right. Right. And we evolved from agree. before that. Okay. Uh, if you hit a species that's been anywhere in the universe for. Uh, let's say 100,000 years, which is nothing, mm -hmm. they are so much more complex than us. <laughs> True. You know? I yeah. mean, we are a very young species. So if we've been around for that that long, if we, you know, go, if we don't destroy Earth and kill ourselves, <laughs> if we go for that long, we will be, the shit we can do would blow any species' minds that's just barely been around. Right. I mean, we're still stuck on our own planet. Yeah. If aliens can come over here... They are so far technologically advanced than us, it, it's not even comparable. So I think they sparked our minds by teaching us some shit, and then they're going to come back. And they're waiting. All the sightings that we see, I think they're checking in on us. And I think they're waiting to see how we're going to do. Because I'm sure they've done this with a lot of other planets, and most of them end in disaster. They ruin their own planet, like we're doing right now. Right. But some of them might find a way to be peace with the planet they live on, and really be like um, like an ecosystem together. Animals don't destroy Earth. We do. We're the only animal that does. Exactly. But there's probably some species out there that don't. And then technologically, they get to something like um, like a energy, a renewable energy that's what is it called? Where it's self sustaining. Um, I can't think. Of like those it. clocks that go forever without anything yeah. in it. Well, it's like the solar power. Yeah, like they they would harness some kind of energy right. that then tips off the aliens. Aha. They made it. Now they're ready. And when that point comes, whether it, whatever the next big thing that they're waiting for us to hit, mm -hmm. 
then they come to Earth and they reveal themselves and they're like, hey, what's up, motherfuckers? We're the ones that came way back then. We're, when we see them coming from the sky, every single person that's ever seen a hieroglyph is going to be like, that's what they were fucking talking about. It's that shit. It's that. It's that's that That's what shit. it looks like. And then they'll be like, we're waiting for you. Now, now that you're up to a certain point, we're going to bump you up again in technology. And the only reason why they do that is because they, it, if they're aliens, there's not just one species. Right. There's a galactic community uh, similar to... Any movie, uh, Star Wars, anything, yeah. uh, Star Trek, um, Futurama, like there's a whole bunch of shit. There's a lot of shit going on, which means there's good and there's bad. Right. The only reason they would come and help us is because as soon as they can bring us up to speed to even be worth it to them mm -hmm. and to introduce us to a galactic community, by default, we're on their side. Okay. They, you know, they created they, us. They created so, us. Yeah. We're, yeah, um, they're, we're slaves to them. We're on their side. And so whether they're good or bad, it don't fucking matter because right. we're on their side. And I think that's why I believe in aliens so much because of it. To me, it makes sense. Well, it makes sense when you explain it like that. I, I think that's what happened. Yeah. And that's why for another reason that I'll bring up, oh, with Mike, the story I'm about yeah. to tell, that, that the UFO that I saw, I am not afraid of them. There's no reason to be afraid of them. Right. So for me, I have not always believed in aliens. And I used to hate, like, alien movies, like, alien shows. You're afraid shows. of them, or? No, I just... just thought it was dumb? Didn't, I didn't believe in them. Oh, okay. I, I truly thought that it was dumb, and it was a waste of my time to even give this, like, a thought. To give okay. it a second thought. And then it wasn't until a lot of... Honestly, you want to know what got me thinking about it? It was the documentary that came out about the mermaid that apparently the government hid. Yeah, but it was just a fake. It wasn't a documentary. I know. But, but they, like, they showed it as. They showed it yeah. as a documentary. Yes. And that was like, wait, is this shit like real? Like, <laughs> what if it is? What uh, if no. they are hiding shit from us? And like, it's Oh, for sure that, they're hiding shit from but us. But that's what I'm saying. Like, obviously, it doesn't have to be a mermaid. It could be aliens, a lot of just research, research discoveries, anything. Yeah. Like, wait, they can actually hide it from us. And nobody even gives it. Not that they don't give it a second thought. There's nothing that we could do. No, no, definitely not. So then it's like... We can't make our government give us their secrets, and we shouldn't. We can't even handle the COVID-19, stay at home, don't touch your face, don't go so social distancing. How the fuck would we handle We, you know, go crazy and buy the shits out of store and, like, hurt everyone else. We can't even handle that, much less, oh, yeah, by the way, yeah. Uh, Star Wars, that shit's real. <laughs> and we're the dumbest. Like, we're the dumbest, we're the weakest dumbest species. species out there. Yeah. Like, we're fucking ants to them. No, so that to me just got my, like, wheels turning about the idea that it is possible that Area 51 is completely real yeah. and that shit there's, is actually held there. There's a lot of accounts of people finding and things that have been covered up of um, non, non-earthly uh, metals. Yes. That have been found. And they're like, yeah, there's a lot of accounts that, and it gets covered up. And they're like, no, we tested it. We could test it. Oh, it's gone. We don't know where it is anymore. It's gone. We don't yeah. know. Or, oh, it was just this kind of metal. Exactly. And this reaction happened or whatever it may be. Um, but yeah, that's actually what got me starting to think about, starting to believe in the idea that there are other beings. Yeah. So. So. Um, so you saw a UFO. We did see a UFO. <laughs> so my buddy and I, Mike. Um, we were, I want to say like, uh, let's say 22, 23 at the time. And we had gone out drinking for a night, we went to some bar and then we came to my house just to hang out and chill. And, um, we had been drinking. I always preface this story with this, but we were not fucked up. Okay. We were not fucked up. Uh, we go outside into the backyard and we live a little bit in the hill country. So there's not lights all around us. There's no, no street, street lights. Street there's lights. No, you can't even see another house. You like, always see the stars. Yes. Like for example. Very clear outside Texas hill country. Mm -hmm. or, you can't even see another house. So we go out there and we're smoking some cigarettes and drinking and the dogs are running around and we're just looking at the stars and just bullshitting. Well, Mike and I are kind of staring in the same direction towards the end of our property and over that end of the property, it's just it's just trees. It's just woods. Yeah. It's just woods. And then all maybe... All you see are trees. All you see is a fuckload of trees. Yeah. And then maybe, I mean, a quarter mile, point two of a mile is the next house. Yeah. So we just know 
over there into the woods is the next house. Right. Well, we're kind of staring that direction because that's where the side we were smoking cigarettes on. And there's a star over there. And I'm looking at it, and he's looking at it. We're not saying anything. And then finally, he's like, is that star moving? <laughs> and as soon as he said it, I was like, oh, my fucking God. Yes. What, what the fuck is that? And it was a twinkling star. Just like it looked like it was yonder, you know, like yeah. way over there. And we're staring at it, and it is moving. It's getting brighter and a little bit larger. And we figure out, oh, it's moving towards us. Yeah. So it's getting closer and closer. And now it's like a few hundred yards away, a couple of football fields away. And now it's like, oh, shit. So when it got a few hundred yards away, it is so bright and multicolored. At the, it's, it's weird to describe. It was like it had a ring of lights around it. And all the lights were different colors, but they were changing simultaneously. Okay. Like, when you look at a star in the sky, you can see it's twinkling, and you can see it's a lot of different colors, but you can't pick, you can't be like, blue, red, red, you know, like, Yeah, no, it's I feel so like that's with any, any light that is super, super bright, you almost see all of the different colors. It's like colors. a kaleidoscope, yes, like right. fractals. Mm -hmm. So, that's what it looked like. And then it got closer, and it's coming closer, and now it's like over the trees over in our property yeah and it's moving towards us how big was it at that point um i mean in the sky i don't know like the uh, size of like a baseball okay and so it was like really high up no that's the thing well right at that point that's how far that's how big it looked okay um so it's getting closer and closer and here's the thing I know distances uh, vertically pretty well because we're scuba divers. Mm -hmm. So if you go down 50 feet and you look up, you, you always remember you know. how far that is. It was about 200 feet in the air. Okay. Which is high, but not super high. Not super high at all. Not super fucking high. So it's, it, I mean, I would equate it to like a, um, like a water tower. Okay. That's like how high I mean, it's the high, but was. not super fucking no, huge. Like no airplane can fly that low exactly. around us. Well, they're not supposed to. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So it's coming closer and my buddy Mike is fucking freaking out now. He's like, <laughs> what the fuck is that? And it's getting closer. And I was like, dude, it's coming right to us. And he's like, what do you think that is? And I'm like, that's a UFO. It, that has to be. And as it comes closer and starts coming over the trees that are near us, he freaks the fuck out and he screams and he runs inside and i stood there right underneath it and as it gets closer the lights that were in a circle like this they rotate on themselves and turn all the way around okay so they're like this yeah. think about like a coin because the ring of lights and then it flipped like this instead okay and as it does this it comes right over me right over where you're standing and the lights are so bright and this is like three four in the morning that it lit up the whole driveway, the stead I was standing on. It was bright around me. Like, I could see around me. So, did you, like, look up and all you saw was light? It was too bright. You couldn't even look at it? It was too bright to light. It didn't look like it was shining light on me. Mm -hmm. It looked like it was so bright that it was illuminating everything around me. Right. And as it flew over me, it just went... Hmm. And then it goes over the pool along the side of the house. And then, very quickly... Off into the hills. Over the hills. Yeah. Like, it came by us, I want to say, oh man, I can't even, I would say 15, 20 miles an hour. Like, it came, and then when it got to the edge of the property, and then where the hills start rolling, yeah. it went. It took off. And so I was like, holy shit. But it I went, just like, saw... so you know how planes only move this way, like, on our property? Yes. I only see planes everywhere now. Okay. All planes, when they fly, they have flight. Paths. exactly yeah. so this wasn't flying on like any sort of flight path like no. it just straight up went that way no uh, no the planes fly this way they fly east to west over yeah, our property I, yeah no this went that way over the hills okay so totally different way and the way it went over the hills it went like it was it maintained it was like moving over yes moving it didn't just go them. linear it was going rolling like waves. Like yeah. it went over a hill, over the hill. And I could see it. And then gone. I was like, oh my God. So it's almost like they were trying to stay low to the ground. Exactly. That's okay. actually, that's exactly what it was. Yeah. So then um, I come inside. I was like, I can't believe that fucking happened. Was like, what the fuck? Well, the next morning I was like, I need, I have to tell my dad. So my dad is ex-military and he knows a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was like, dad, I told him exactly what fucking happened. And I was like, 
uh, we live kind of close to a military base. So I was like, is that something at Camp, uh, Camp Bullis, the military base that we live by? And he said, the way you described it, 100% no. First off, military don't like to uh, test fly shit over the public because if it goes down or something happens, oh, it's a bitch to get. It's back. a lot of money to recover and then to explain. They have to make a statement in the news and shit like that. Right. They test their shit over their property. Mm-hmm. Secondly, there's no reason for something like that to be over a residential area. Exactly. I mean, it's not. It, it makes no sense. Yeah. And then. It's important to note uh, this was about 10 years ago because we didn't have the kind of drones that are available and everywhere today. Exactly. The only drones that they had in that day were the big ass white predator drones, mm-hmm. the attack strike ones that they would fucking send in Iraq and Afghanistan. Exactly. And bomb them. They didn't have these little like quad prop, quiet. Right. I have three drones, like radio control ones. Mm-hmm. My cousin has one. We fly them a lot. Nothing sounds like this because you can hear it. It for how big when it actually came over us, I want to say is like the size of uh, like your car. Okay. Like the VW bug. She yeah. has a bug and a beetle. It was fucking big, and it was to come something that big to fly over us just to hum is not realistic. No, definitely not. I mean, if think about kind of a prop, helicopter. It, yeah. A helicopter could be the size of the bug, maybe a little bit bigger. Bigger, but yeah. But. Yeah, there's no way. Helicopters are so loud. Super it's loud. So noisy. Super fucking And same loud. thing with planes. You hear a plane from inside so the So far away. And so for them, to, if you want to say like, oh, the military may have been testing something. First of all, they're not going to fucking test it right here. Yeah, not over residential areas. Yeah, where they can, if something happens, there's nothing to do. And then the way it flew and how low it was, I was like, that's something very different. Yeah. That is not a helicopter or like a little something it's that's way fucking different right and it's definitely not something that a like private owner would have no especially not 10 years ago no no yeah now if i saw that i would really have to look and i would think it was a a huge drone yeah and i would have to look and see videos of something because of how quiet it was it wasn't like we, you, I mean, we fly our drones. You've seen me fly the drones. Yeah. You can hear oh, the you propeller. Oh, you can hear them. You yeah. hear it. It's like a ee, ee. It sounds like a weed eater almost, you know? <laughs> yeah. But it's not a hum. The no, way it hummed, it was so not. silent. And you, you know what was very odd about the hum? Which I just thought about this. When it flew over me, I could feel it in me. Like oh, music. Okay. Like the frequency. Like bass. Yes, it vibrated. Mm. Like, mm, and it vibrated me. I was like, oh, Interesting. shit. Yeah. So, I mean, my buddy, he freaked out, ran in, and I was fucking there. And the reason why I made the statement earlier is I would never be afraid of an alien. Yeah. Because if they come to Earth, they are so far technologically advanced than us that there's nothing we can fucking do. Yeah, there, there's literally nothing that we would even be able to do. Like, no. if they invaded Earth, there's... there is... It's not even an invasion. It's whatever the fuck they want is going to happen. Yeah. Because as humans, right now... We cannot even send a man to Mars and back in the lifetime of a human being. It's not possible for us. Yeah. So for a alien to (laughs) zip on over to Earth and say what's up and come check us out and back, that means it is convenient to them. Right. It's like taking a car ride maybe to the next city over and back. Hey, let's go. Let's go to Earth. Let's go have lunch. Let's go make a day of it. (laughs) It's convenient for them to do, which means they are so far above us that we can't even go to the, the freaking mars we can't even land on the moon and or we can't even live on the moon can't even go to mars the next closest planet to us and back in a lifetime and they can zip on over it from other galaxies to see us do you think that they've like stepped foot on earth since then i think for sure they're keeping a very close eye on um, our habitat on soil, the air, uh, the air itself, the quality of air. Like, what are we really doing to this planet? So do you think that they just go to very remote places? Or do you think that they have the ability to look like a human being? Oh, uh, that's, no, that's something I've never considered, but 100% they do. To, in my mind, what sells me is if they can get here mm-hmm. and it's convenient to them, we, we don't, we're not even, I mean, our sci-fi movies aren't even advanced of how advanced they would be. They're that far. Yeah. I mean, they don't run like us. Our bodies are not similar. Our brains are not similar. Right. 
They are something else that we can't even comprehend. They probably use energy as fuel or like to propel their craft, or they don't even, it's not even a propulsion driven vehicle. It's actually moving in time and space to get there. Mm -hmm. That would mean it's convenient for them because right. they're not actually traveling it. They're going it, you know? Exactly. Like, it's kind of like the, um, like the movie. This is a very like dumbed down example, but like a wrinkle in time. Yes. It's almost exactly what you're talking about. Yes. It's like the closest is from A to B, and then you like move the paper together, and they can and travel over the fold. Yeah. yeah. So, it, yeah, for sure they can shape shift and, and mask as us, or they have something that they can just walk around and we can't even see them. Right. Or what did we just watch that they actually did that exam? Oh, Stranger Things. Stranger Things. Yeah. Yes, I was like, what did I just see? A wrinkle in time. Was yes. It called and the, then uh, Stranger Things. The flea on the tightrope. Yeah. And you're talking about. Yes. The, yes. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, Stranger Things. I believe in aliens 100%. <laughs> I have no doubt. And then after seeing that, that solidified in my mind. Like, that's fucking, I mean, that yeah. was an alien. That was something that was looking at us and certainly saw me. Right. And, and saw my buddy run inside like a bitch. So I am, like, very much a skeptic whenever it comes to aliens, UFOs, etc. And so for me... I asked him so many questions, like ask him how many things I asked him about what it could be, what if you heard, like what you heard, oh, yeah. what exactly mm -hmm. you saw. Like I do believe that he did see an unidentified flying object. I've that seen night. one other thing out here, and it was when I was driving home from the bar, and I saw a light that looked very weird and it was moving in a very peculiar way. Mm -hmm. uh, like when you see like helicopters and planes, they fucking fly in straight. They're yeah. going somewhere, you know, unless they're like searching for a criminal running around, but they don't that just That would be a like, helicopter. Yeah. Well, I saw something over me and I rolled down my windows when I was driving. I couldn't hear it. So I literally mm -hmm. pulled the car over to get out to look because it was like above and I couldn't, I didn't want to fucking crash. Yeah. And I pulled over and when I got out, it was gone. So that was something, but I didn't have eyes on it long enough to really like what this happened, this other story. To really like study its movement and everything. Or to say for sure in my mind that was a UFO. Because yeah. I don't know. Right. The one that flew over me, 100%, that was fucking something. Yeah. And literally when it flew over me, I put my hands up and I was like, take me. Like, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. Jesus. I'm here because they're either going to come and kill us. Okay. I mean, there's nothing I can do. If it wants me dead, I'm dead. Yeah. Or maybe it's time for us to be introduced to the galactic community and they're going to pick a select few humans to do it, to embark this knowledge on. Do you think you'll be picked? I mean, I fucking hope so. <laughs> Anytime an alien would fly over, I'm fucking here. Pick me. <laughs> me. I'll do it. Oh, man. I want to be involved in that. Yeah. yeah. No, for sure. So, yeah, I saw one. I mean, I would have... You could have seen one, but you were asleep in the car that one time. Okay, so really quick, we'll tell this story because we really want to tell you about this movie idea we have. Oh, yeah. So really fast, we'll tell you the story. So we used to go hunting in... Casterville. Casterville. And I was pretty young whenever we would go hunting there. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is very woodsy. No, again, no street lights, like dirt roads. Yeah. Like... The town itself, Casterville, is very, very small. Very and, small. And this is way on the outskirts, like... Way out there where it's just land. Just yeah, fucking exactly. Texas hill country. Like, how many acres did they have on there? Uh, the, the property that we were staying on when y'all left, it was 150. Right. It's been so long since I've even been there. Um, so, I was asleep in the car one time, and they were driving home? Yes. So, that hunting trip, it was myself, my father, my uncle, and two of my boy cousins. Joey, the dum-dum, the one you heard the other <laughs> night that threw up in the picture. Handies on handies. Yeah. And then, so, it's a... Mainly a guy's hunting trip, but one of the nights, all the women would come. Uh, my sister would come, my girlfriend at the time, my cousin's girlfriend and, or wife, and my aunt and my mom. Mm -hmm. Y'all would all come, join us for dinner, fish all day, have fun, and then at night, y'all would leave. Yeah. So that happened, y'all took off, and uh, at that time, mom was driving a Hummer, so y'all were in the Hummer. My cousin's uh, girlfriend at the time, I believe she drove because... Uh, mom was too drunk to drive. Oh, they're yeah, like, you yeah, can't yeah. drive. So they, they were, were in the drinking. car and you were in the back sleeping. Yeah, I was sleeping again. I don't even know how old I was. Probably like seven. Yeah. I don't know. Um, so there is a very specific train track. Mm -hmm. That you have to cross on that long road to get to the That ranch. you have to cross. But it's not your typical city train track. It doesn't have lights. No, it's... No. All it has is like the little gate yeah. to come down. A little wooden one thing and just, yeah. that's it. And then it goes back up and that's it. And it only goes, like, you can hear the train coming, and then, like, the thing goes down. Mm -hmm. It's not like it goes down, and it's, like, 
oh, you minutes, yeah. like hours, no, 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 whatever. No, no, no. no, it's like as soon as the train is coming, it's down. So they were driving home, and so... So they were driving, and um, they were uh, about to cross the railroad track, and when they're getting closer to it, the guardrail goes down. And they're mm-hmm. like, oh, okay. So they pull up to it, and they're sitting there, and they're like, the fuck is the train? Like, the train comes really quick. This isn't a long wait. Yeah. And nothing came. And then all of a sudden, it was my mom that was in the back. She was like, why is the car lit up? (laughs) I mean, she's drunk. She's like, why is the car lit up? Well, instantly, they all notice that the entire car had been illuminated. Like, the hood of the truck, all around them, a car, like a spotlight was hanging, like, shining down on them from a helicopter or something. Yeah. And they freaked out. And as they realize this, the guardrail goes up and the lights turn off. And they're like, what the fuck? They open the doors and look up. There is no street light or light that is connected to that railroad crossing. Yeah. There nothing. are no lights out there. Nothing. It is and a so, pitch black, like straight up yeah, hill country. So that crossing uh, went down to stop them so mm-hmm. they could get a look at them. And out there, uh, a lot in Texas, the most famous little town is uh, Marfa. They talk about the Marfa yeah. lights. Out there in Crassville, they see lights too. Mm -hmm. They see really weird orbs uh, going over pastures, ranches. And the ranch that we've been to, um, Noel, the guy that, the hunting guy that used to go with us, he said he'd see them all the time. Yeah. And he's like, 100%, you you guys just missed it. If you would have looked down and looked up, there would have been a blue light over you. And he's like, there's no light. And even the next day, they told, all y'all came back and they told us this. And when we drove it to go see it out, there is no light. No. It's a simple country railroad uh, crossing. It's not fancy or anything. And it is so dead silent in that area in the whole country so dead silent that anything flying above you you'd be able to hear Mm -hmm. so and especially with no train no train actually came so it's not like it it blocked it or you know it canceled out the noise yeah so very sketch very that's another one yeah i wish i would have been there for that okay so we saw this facebook post a few months ago yeah maybe it it was a while ago and it was about this man from texas He was arrested in El Paso. El Paso. Supposedly arrested in El Paso. And apparently he had been kidnapping, abducting, raping, (laughs) killing. um, No, I don't think he Not killing, just raping and abducting. I don't know. And for over, what, 50 years? 40 years. For 40 40 years. years. And apparently... 79 people. 79 people. And apparently what he had been doing was drugging these people and then abducting them as if he were an alien so he'd take them into like his van that was all decked out looked like you were in an operating room basically like an alien ship yes and then he would dress up like an alien so he he uh the police the police or fbi supposedly arrested this guy because he was somehow connected or suspicion of the disappearance of a couple girls Mm -hmm. and when they took him for to arrest him he straight up confessed to everything yeah and he told them that in 40 years he would drive all up and down between texas new mexico nevada and california you missed arizona but arizona i'm sorry (laughs) arizona and what he was doing is he was i forget the paralytic he was using do you remember um oh he said that it was a mixture of lsd lsd pcp and, and something that paralyzed you. Yeah, I Something don't. that would paralyze you, but you were still conscious for Yes. It. So he was somehow drugging these, not just women, men and women, and they would go out and wake up paralyzed, but still conscious, and your brain's still working, tripping your balls off on PCP. And PCP, LSD. which is a horrible drug. Yeah. And LSD, acid, and you're paralyzed with your eyes awake. He would wake up in this outfitted, amazingly decorated place, and that it looked like the inside of a ship with crazy lights, with strobe lights, weird machine music going on, and then he was dressed up really well as an alien himself, and he would uh, rape you. He would anally he would probe, anally probe you. and use tools, custom tools that he had made yeah. to sexually assault you, and then he would knock you out again and then leave him where you found him. Yeah. To 79 people. So apparently this news article was fake. Apparently they, apparently yes. Apparently it was fake. But when this came out, holy shit, how amazing would a movie be about this guy There's or about a, this story? A lot of facets to the story. 
One of them, it's fucking crazy that someone could actually get away with this for almost 40 years and almost 80 people, 79 people in the most, it, it makes sense, the most UF sighting based uh, states. Yeah. Texas, Nevada, Area 51, Arizona. New Mexico, Roswell, yeah. and California. I'm... These places are the most sightings that there's ever been. Exactly. And it could have been this mother, all oh, these lunatics, and I'm using quotations here if you're not watching. They claim that they've been abducted by aliens. They truly believe. Anally probed. Yeah. And then left. They truly believe so that they were abducted. It could have been this crazy motherfucker that did this and got his jollies off doing this. But when you think about it, think about the psychological, damage. emotional, physical damage that he did to 79 people. You literally, he ripped the fabric of what you thought reality was. Yeah. So. Okay, I believe in aliens. I saw you know. But do I really know? No. If I got raped by some fucking alien, now I think that there's fucking aliens and whenever the fuck they want, they can come and rape me again. And not only that, you're on PCP. That is such a mind fuck. Mind altering drug. And acid. Yes. And you're paralyzed, you can't move. And a lot of these people that give their stories about being abducted by aliens, they say... I couldn't move, but they were, they, I wasn't even strapped down. I just couldn't move. They had this yeah. control over me. It's that fucking drug. And then they're, you know, this guy's raping you with all these tools that he makes, and you think it's an alien. I am sure, and I am, if this happened, I am, you are such an evil incarnate person because these people, the psychological damage that they did to them, they literally got raped. Well, not only that, but literally anybody in this, in the time frame and in any of those states, if any of them did experience like, oh, I was abducted by aliens, and then this man comes out and says that he has been doing this, yeah. now you have no fucking idea what happened to you. No. It, what if you were abducted yeah. by this guy, and then on the other hand, what if you were still abducted by aliens? You have no fucking no, clue. No, now you have no fucking clue, because if you're in any of these no states, idea. but I, 30 years ago, for 30 years, okay, some of these people, some people that have been abducted by aliens have killed themselves. Yeah. It has ruined their families. Their, their loved ones don't believe them. Their children, their, fa their extended family, their parents don't believe them. They think you're crazy. Some people have ended up in mental institutions over this. Because of this. People have lost their jobs. It has ruined their lives. Not to mention just their outwardly lives, but in their own mind and heart. It has broken these people. And then imagine that it comes out, oh, this man was, was actually just doing dude. these things. Yeah. And then the families and everything that they've been torn apart that they from. Took their, they turned their backs to Crazy Jim because Jim says he got butt fucked by an alien. No, someone fucking captured him and tortured him. And drugged him to the max and that he, just, he can be drugged. If you've never taken a hallucinatory drug or a psychedelic, you would not know... What the fuck is going on? Yeah. I come out of a grocery store and then boom, however he drugs me, he just comes up behind me like Dexter the serial killer with a needle, bink, and you're out. And you have no idea what happened. And then you wake up in a alien spacecraft and he does horrible things to you. You tell your family about it, your wife leaves you. You're, you don't see your kids anymore. You lose your job because it's all you can fucking talk about and you want people to think and then you end up blowing your brains out. Because you cannot live with the fact that an alien picked you and destroyed your life. And then this fucking dude comes out, and it's this crazy guy that got away with this 40 years. Absolutely mind fucking. So we read this article, and it blew my mind. Yeah, and we talked so we about did, it for hours. I told multiple people about it, and hours. they could not believe it because, it. because of the damage, if you think about it, it did to these people. I can't even fathom the amount of damage that it would do to a person in their lives. Yeah. Literally, just... It would affect every aspect of everything. your life. Everything. Not, not everything. only physically you were, you were hurt you know, like being raped, but emotionally and mentally. And then it destroys, exactly. it destroys your relationships with everyone around you because now they either believe you, but if they believe you, they think you still got raped by an alien. You still got a probe. They don't believe you. They think you're fucking us. You are now discredited in their mind. You are a lunatic. Yeah. I, it's horrible. Absolutely horrible. So what I thought of is, and I'm writing the script. Don't take it from me. Yeah. <laughs> we got to turn this into a fucking movie. This would if be you did the... an amazing movie, because in my opinion, there are not that many good alien movies out there. there we aren't. saw one on a, uh, what was it? A, uh, a UFO murder cult that was crazy. You and I? Yeah, that, that uh, remember when they were young and the boys escaped and then they go back? 
And it's, oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So we I've did. seen a few. There are a few good alien movies, but not a lot. Yeah. But this one, I thought of an idea for a movie that the movie would start out and it's going to show you, let's just say, Presley's life. So she's going to school, blah, blah. She's in New York. <laughs> or not New York. It wouldn't work there. But somewhere, you know, here, California. Texas, yeah. Boom. She gets abducted by aliens and it shows the abduction and it's crazy and it's Almost super like it would scary. be through my eyes. Yeah, through your eyes. Through your experience of when you got abducted. Yes. And then it would fast forward afterwards and it would it would show you whatever years later and how fucked up your life is because of it. Yeah. Then you'd go on to the next person. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Little Jimmy, when he was 15 years old, walking home from his baseball game in New Mexico, boom, got abducted. And then it would show his life and how it ruined his life. And then by the time you get to the third or fourth story, you are in some, through someone's eyes and you are in the process of getting anally probed, raped, and abducted. You're in the ship, and then all of a sudden these lights burst through and all these cops bust in. And they catch the guy, and it turns out, then the movie goes forward and it shows the guy getting arrested and him confessing, and then it shows it from his eyes of how he abducted you and the other person and the yeah. other person and so, dozens of other people. Obviously, it would look totally different from a person's eyes who is on LSD and, P- and PCP. It would look like aliens. It would look like I'm in a fucking UFO. Yeah, and you would hear, it's shiny bright, lights are going crazy, and you can't. You don't even know you're tripping. You yeah. don't even know your mind you has no been altered. Idea. And you can't move the panic and sheer terror. I mean, we're not just physical pain. We're talking way more way it hurts way more than physical way the psychological more. damage that that guy did yeah and so i really think this could be one of the best alien movies ever because the whole movie you would think holy shit these aliens what the fuck is going on like is yeah. anyone gonna survive like come out of this okay and be okay inside and one person killed them so the other person ruined their family this? Yes. like what's, like, what's going, going on, on? What's what is the, the end of this movie and then you find out that it's this super diabolically brilliant it is a evil person yeah. psychopath lunatic that did it and they catch him at the end and then all the people that come out th- throughout the last 40 years that he's like yeah i did him too yeah i did him too and these people you know have some peace of mind of mending of what happened and then hopefully their lives can be put kind of back together but he's been doing this for 40 years it's way and too then, late for a lot of people and then what if it ends like kind of on a cliffhanger then it would be like there's one that he didn't do it could be the one that he didn't do or when at one point near the end they would be like how did you get this idea and he's like huh, you think i'm the only one? Oh yeah because honestly i 100 percent after i read that article which we researched a lot there's a lot of articles that say learn, that specific article from that supposed uh el paso online newspaper uh is fake mm-hmm. but a lot of them are like that's it was written um, based off, on. off the real one and they got rid of the real one so there's a lot of stuff if you believe in conspiracies that that was covered up and they don't know why it was covered up but in my mind as soon as I read that I was 100% someone's done that there's so many fucking crazy people killers so many. there's so many 100% killers. There's someone so many. did that that's because as soon up. as I read it, I was like, that makes perfect fucking sense. I and think that's the most mind fucking What about thing? all the people that think they've been abducted and it's really this evil person? Right. It makes so much sense to me. And I want, I want to make that a movie. Honestly, so if we do write this movie, um, one, don't steal it. Two, I'm sorry. Write the script, so. Two, sorry, we just ruined the ending for you. <laughs> no, no, you'll, you'll watch it years later. You'll down watch the road. it anyways. You'll forget about this. But yeah, so that was it for our paranormal episode two. And yeah. to think, it all started with a dog bowl. Yeah, was- so, <laughs> update, it has not moved this episode. Also, if you hear this, I want you to go to uh, Effing Priceless, either our YouTube or Facebook or Instagram. If you have some badass ghost stories or UFO or yes. pictures and... Guys, we want to interact with y'all. Send us some stuff or post on the uh, on the social media accounts. Yes, let us know. DM us or post comments or whatever it is because we want to hear it. We're super into this stuff. Like we said, honestly, just me and him alone, like talk back and forth about this stuff. It, that that on guy a random day. doing that and doing that to people blew my mind. Yeah, that was mine. Again, we talked about it for hours. Yes, and, hours. and every time we told one of our friends, they were like, Holy shit. Yes. The damage, the the twistedness of that whole story and to put it into a movie, oh, it'd be so fucking, fucking good. Psycho, but yeah, it would be so, so good. That'd be an alien movie I'd love. Oh, man. Because <laughs> the twist at the end would be like, oh my God, it's fucking some dude twist. doing this. Yeah. And then you'd be like, that, that could have happened to all those people. You don't know. It would be wild. 
what if the government doesn't let us make this movie? No, we'll do it. No, fuck that. It's getting made. Fuck that. But yeah, so thank you guys so much for listening to episode eight. We promise we'll come back with some funny stories soon. So don't you worry about that. And if we catch any ghosts, we'll let you know. Yes, we'll definitely let you know. We'll post on our social media. But thank you guys so much for listening to episode eight. Huge, huge thanks to our bands once again. Yep, our intro music is uh, Saltwater Slide. The, uh, the guys here locally, San Antonio, they're reggae vibe, really chill music, always puts me in a great, great mood. Um, really good guys. They're all environmentally conscious. They do some beach cleanups. They really promote, you know, taking care of our earth uh, like the aliens want us to do. Like yep. we were talking about it. Go ahead, <laughs> check them out on their uh, social media accounts, YouTube, Pandora, Spotify. Yep. Uh, the song for the intro is Good Times. Good Times, hell yeah. And then for our outro, it is So Damn Nice by Love Killed the Hero. Their lead singer, Wally. Wally Robles, one of our good friends. Thank you so much to them as well. Go like their NPR Tiny Dust Submission video. And that's it for this week. Hope you guys Tuesday, enjoyed guys. it. It's getting late. My body's tired. That's all.